Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran in many places have told us that we are here on this earth to be tested. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. The one who created death and life to test who is the best in deeds. You are here to be tested. يا أيها الذين آمنوا. Bring all your problems, your marital problems, your financial problems, your health problems. Bring all your problems. يا أيها الذين آمنوا. يا الله I'm going through so much. يا الله I have so much debt. يا الله so many things happening at home. I lost my job. يا الله my children are driving me crazy. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة. يا الله when I'm going through all that, what should I do? الله عز وجل the Creator Himself said, Seek help with two things. Sabr, be patient, and Salat. Perform your Salat to the best of your ability. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an came back from a trip and he was informed that your brother died. So he went, performed wudu, Allahu Akbar, and prayed two rak'ah. He said, Ibn Abbas, you do not ask when, how, where, why. You do not ask anything. He said, didn't you hear what Allah said? bis-sabri was-salah. You told me I was patient and then I performed two rak'ah. Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. When I seek help with patience and salat, what is the reward? What is the prize? Allah Azza wa Jal will be with you. And what does that mean when Allah is with me? When Allah Azza wa Jal is with you, He will turn the sickness into health. He will turn the stress into joy. And give the glad tidings to the one who are patient. Who are the Sabirin, Ya Allah? When the calamity hit, you got a text message, your house is on fire. You got a text message, you're fired. You got a text message, your wife got into an accident. You got a text message, you've been diagnosed with cancer, stage four. What is the first response? There's not even a space between Musiba and Qalu. Instantly, Qalu. Qalu what, Ya Allah? Have we ever pondered what does that statement mean? Inna lillah. I belong to Allah. My spouse belongs to Allah. My children belong to Allah. My business belongs to Allah. My health belongs to Allah. And when something belongs to someone, he has the right to ask for it whenever they want. We all know the story of the Sahabiya when her son died and her husband came back. And after they spoke and sat down and did what her husband does with his wife, she told him, if our neighbor lend us a pot and then he comes back and asks for it, what should we do? He said, give it back to them right away. She said, Allah took your son. This is how the believers talk to one another. Inna lillah. And to him, we are all returning and we should report. As-sabr in the sadmati al Patience is when you are first hit with the calamity. Not after two, three weeks of complaining. Why me? Why this? I pray. I fast. I donate. Why this is happening to me? No. Instantly. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whomsoever is hit by a calamity and says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, Allah Azza wa Jal will replace him with something better. Ulaik, the one who said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, when they are hit by a calamity, Ulaik alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah, wa ulaika humul muhtadun. These are the ones who get the salawat, salawat from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal will boast about them in front of the angels. He will praise them in front of the angels. And they will get the mercy of Allah, which is the only ticket, which is the only key to Jannah. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, indeed, these are the guided ones. Since we are all going to be tested, my brothers and sisters, just few things to remember when we are being tested. Number one, remember that the one who's testing you is the most merciful. The one who's testing you is Arham al rahimin He loves you more than your own mother. That should make me feel at ease because I know that my mother will not even want me to get a headache. The one who's testing you is Ahkam al hakimin the all-wise. Why, when, where? No, no, no. The one who's testing me is the all-wise himself, is the one who knows the unseen. If I tell you I know the unseen, you will listen to everything I have to say. But there's only one who knows the unseen. It's Allah Azza wa Jal. Second, compare what Allah took to what Allah has left. You will find it insignificant. He took your child, he left your house and your health and your family and your business. He took your business, he left your family, he left your children. Compare what he took to what he has left and you'll be amazed. 
Third, remember the best of creation, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the most beloved to Allah, lost all his children. We all know as parents, what does it mean to lose a child? Lost all his children except Fatima while he was alive. He took them and he put them in the grave one by one. He was forced out of his city. He was called names, Majnoon, Sha'ir, and he is the best of the best. So if he was testing with these kind of tests, what about me and you? Fourth, remember very important. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will never ever test me and you with something we cannot handle. Then punish us for not handling. This is not the wadud. This is not the rafur. This is not the azim. This is not the latif.